Hey guys, it's Jen, and I just wanted to share with you how I'm beginning this process of a layout that I'm creating with the June releases from Allie Edwards uh, Digital Shop, and I'm using the messy um, read circles, I think it's called, and I am going to create a border across the bottom of my layout. So I'm making a horizontal eight and a half by 11 layout today, and I'm going to use these circles. There's a whole bunch of different ones, and I'm going to use a variety of them to create a little border along the bottom of the page. Now, they come black, but you can color them any color that you like. You could also use these to cut out on your silhouette. Something like that would be really cool too. Um, but what I'm going to do is, like I said, print a border on the bottom of, of my page. And so I am going to color these all gray, but I'm going to do one of them in red. I have a photo of some books and red is kind of like the main color in the books. And so I want to, to do one of the circles red. And so I think books for the win is the one that I want to color red. And so the way that I like to color these, and there's different ways that you can do this. You can just use the paint tool here, um, or you can go to image adjustments, hue saturation, and then click on colorize. And then you can color this whatever color you want. And I tend to do it that way. I don't know why. It's just something that I am familiar with, I guess. I don't know. Um, let's see. Let's saturate that a little bit more. Let's make it a little less light. And... I kind of like the orangey red look, so I'm going to go with that as okay. And like I mentioned, I want to color the other ones in a gray color, and so I'm just going to do the same thing. But with this time, I don't really need to colorize it. I just need to lighten it. And so I'm going to do kind of a, a really light gray. Let's see. And I'm just going to remember plus 77. Actually, I think I'll do plus 80. And then I can do that on the rest of the circles. So when I go back to adjustments, hue and saturation, then I can just do 80 and it's gonna be the same. So I don't know if that's the easiest way. I just know the ways that I know it and I'm, you know, I'm self-taught and so I just do what I do. So if that works for you, great. If you do it a different way, that's great too. So I'm just going to colorize all of these. And this layout is going to be about a return to reading. Um, uh, reading's always been a huge part of my life. And I haven't read a real book in a long time. And so I wanted to, my daughter and I went to the bookstore the other day and picked up some books. And we decided that each month we're going to go to the bookstore and get a few books. And um, we just... I, we could go to the library, I realize that, and that's more economical, but um, I just, there's something about just getting a new book that I absolutely love, and books, as I mentioned, were a huge part of my growing up, and um, I skipped kindergarten because I could read very well, and all of that kind of stuff, and so I need to bring books back, and so that's kind of what this layout's about. So, now that I have all of my circles colored, what I want to do is I have my canvas and it's eight and a half by 11. I have the rulers turned on because I kind of know that I need to do it on the bottom edge. I have about an inch by nine inches that I need to fill. Um, and if you don't have your rulers on, you can just go to view and click on rulers. And then you can see they turn off or you can turn them back on. And what I'm going to do is just drag these shapes. Oops. I'm going to drag them over to this canvas. So I've got my red one and they're going to come over a lot bigger than what I need. And so what I'm going to do is just size them down until they're about an inch, maybe even smaller, just a little smaller than an inch. And I don't mind if they're all exactly the same. That doesn't matter to me. So I know I want Books for the Wind to be on the right because my title I know already is going to be on the left here. And so um, I'm going to plan to have the, the, like the main focal little uh, circle on the left. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to worry about, so the, the writing is tilted in these 
on some of them and some of them it's straight and you can rotate them if you want to but I like the look of of them being a little bit different from each other and so I'm gonna leave them tilted okay so let's do books equals joy so what I'm just doing is just dragging it from this canvas to this one holding down my shift key while I resize it which will make it so it doesn't distort and then sizing it to about 0.8 something and lining it up with the others. So now I have all of these lined up and I'm just going to select them all so I can move them together and I'm going to move them down a little bit and over a little bit. And I'm just going to, I'm just trying to center them and you can see I have my um, guides turned on so that, that things click into place when they're in the center or lined up with each other and I find that really helpful. Uh, so I'm going to try this. I think that will work and I'm going to change my mind and move these again so that the red one is second to last. Now that I have them in place I'm thinking that will work best. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and print that out. Hey guys, so here is my printed out little 8.5 by 11 with all of the words across the bottom. And like I mentioned, I'm doing a horizontal 8.5 by 11 today. And you can get page protectors. Um, Becky Higgins through Project Life does horizontal 8.5 by 11 page protectors. But you could also put it, just put it vertically in a regular 8.5 by 11 page protector. But... So my plan is to use these three photos. I have some photos of some books we recently got at the bookstore, and then a photo of me reading and a photo of my daughter reading. And this is why I wanted this amount of space at the bottom because I knew I had these photos that needed to take up a certain amount of space and I wanted there to be kind of equal spacing on top and bottom. And so those fit in there nicely. Now I want to include some book a book page. I just have an old poetry book that I've been ripping pages out of to use when I want to. And so I want to slide that somewhere in here. And I'd really like the book, the page number to show, but I haven't decided. I'm, I might do this side so that the page number can show over here. But I haven't decided what exactly, how exactly I'll I'll use this book page if I'm just going to adhere the whole thing to the side or if I'm going to rip it up a little bit. Um, I haven't decided. That will cover up some of my my line here, but that's okay because I put the, the red one on this side. And so that is the plan for that. Now before I do any of this, uh, let me just show you the things that I pulled out and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do my journaling. Um, this is from the Read Story Kit and it says Story Time. And I thought about replacing this because it has dimension and, and it's red as well with books for the win. Um, and so I still might do that. I don't know. I haven't decided. It would cover up that work that I did, but it would be okay. <laughs> um, so I have some leftovers from my read story kit. These are some um, word stickers. And I'm also going to use the, let's see, this screen print. Uh, from it's also from the read story kit if you um, didn't get the physical kit but you got the digital kit it comes with these lines which I used in my Harry Potter uh, read little project if you didn't see that I'll link to it in the description below but I'm planning to um, put some lines right here to journal on using this screen and I'll show you how I'm going to do that in a second I'm also going to use this stamp and use the word the story and this was was a stamp that I got for my week in the life, which I am still planning to document, but I haven't done it yet. Um, and then I'm going to use a combination, I think, of these two alphabet stickers for my title. And I'll do the word reading in these red words, and then I'm going to do a return to with these. Um, they're kind of like a, I don't know if they're meant to be navy or 
or a dark gray or whatever, but I think that they'll work great. And I'm going to put that in this corner here. So that is my plan, and let me show you how I'm going to do this screen printing first. Okay, so before I get to any of the other embellishing, what I'm going to do is do my journaling lines. And so what I first want to do, even though I'm not going to adhere these down yet, I'm going to get my photos in the place where I want them to be because I want to nestle this in the right spot. And so I plan to have it kind of like this, like a grid and I want them equally spaced. And so now I know I have this space to work with for my journaling. So um, these have kind of like a sticky back, but it's not super sticky, but if it's the first time that you're using it, you could, um, oh, there's something red on here, sorry. You could just tap it against your hand a few times to get some of the stick away. But what I'm gonna do is just place it down and I'm gonna try to do this as straight as I can. That's going to be good enough. And I don't want to do any part of this side of the stencil, so I'm just going to put this here so I don't get any ink or paint on that part. And I'm using some Allie Edwards Mount Hood paint for this, and it is silver. And it looks super cool when you stick it through the screen. And I wanted to show you, I did the larger portion on this little 3x4 card, and it has this pretty glisten. I'm going to put this on autofocus for just a second so that I can show you up close. Kind of the shimmer that this has, it's really pretty. And I wanted to use this because it reminds me of um, books of scripture or fancier books have kind of, you know when some of the books have the fancy um, gold or silver on the edges of the book pages. And so I thought this would be a good nod to that. So that is why I chose silver. And also it matches my color scheme. Um, and so I'm going to just use just, you don't need very much because what this is going to do is push the paint through the lines and there's not very much, the lines aren't, you know, very thick or anything. So it's not going to take up very much paint. So I'm just going to put a little bit on there. We'll see how far that goes. And I have this little scraper tool. You could also use just a sturdy piece of cardstock or uh, like an old credit card or gift card or something like that. I'm just going to push it through. And you can see I still have some on my palette knife, so I'm just going to take that and I'm just pushing it through. And you can kind of see when when the white uh, of the cardstock behind turns silver. I need just a little bit more. And you can do this as perfectly or as imperfectly as you like. Um, I like it not perfect, but kind of. <laughs> so you could just leave it like this and not get the edges if you don't care. Um, but I'm going to do this pretty, pretty perfectly this time. So I need to get some off and then get it on the tip again so I can get in the corners. And you can just mask off these edges if you're worried about getting the paint anywhere it shouldn't be. Okay, and I'm gonna call that good. So now I can peel this up. Because I used a textured cardstock, it kinda has this weird, um, a weird texture to it, but that's totally fine with me. I'm going with it. and. Because I have a little leftover paint, I'm just going to put it on the back of this card and um, just let it be what it's going to be. Then this one, if I ever use this card for a pocket page or something, I'll have two options. See, there's a very messy way of doing it that's not perfect, so you can you can do it any way you like. Now, I do recommend immediately cleaning your screen because if you don't, the paint will get stuck in the screen and you won't get as crisp of lines in the future. And so I'm just using a baby wipe because that's what I have handy. And I'm just going to wipe that off. 
So because I used so little paint, this is going to dry very quickly. Um, I'll go ahead and put my screen print back on here. And now I'm ready to go ahead and assemble my page. And so I want to decide how I want the book page. And I'm leaning toward just putting the whole page on only because, I don't know, I like the idea of it kind of being half and half. And so I think I'm gonna do that. So what I'm gonna do to lay this down is to use some double-sided adhesive tape because um, I don't want to put it on the, I don't wanna put adhesive on the book page because it's so porous, that kind of paper is, that it's tricky to um, get the adhesive on there, I think. So I'm just going to put a little bit down, and then if I need more, I can put more. Okay, so there's a little bit of a lip where I trimmed this, and I kind of want to just put a notebook edge punch there, and so I'm going to try to see if I can slide this in somehow, or I'll have to re-adhere it, but I really want to do this, so yeah, I'm going to have to re-adhere it, but I'm going to do it anyway. You can see the book page is completely stuck to the adhesive. Crap! <laughs> okay, well I ripped it, so I'm gonna get a new one. Actually. <laughs> I have a couple more here. Um, I guess we can do this one. So I'm gonna... Well, let me see how far I want this. I kinda wanna rip this a little bit ski wampus and so I'm gonna not that much I can't decide if I want Robert Frost's name to be on there or not but that looks good okay so I'm gonna put it just like this and that means there will be just a tiny bit of overhang so I'm gonna go ahead and just punch fully in there there we go and now I can get this stuck down again so okay now I've got this all fixed and it is glued down and I'm going to just adhere my photos I'm thinking I want to put this one actually up on some foam so what I like to do is I like to use um, fun foam which is inexpensive and it's adhesive backed on one side, the kind that I that I like. Um, and it's cheaper than buying the little foam squares and so since I use it a lot, I, I like to use that. So I'm just using this leftover that I had die cut from, which PS, you can die cut from fun foam and it's really cute. Uh, okay, and then I usually just use a double-sided um, tape to tape that on. So while I'm telling this off, a little bit more about the story I'm telling here. Like I mentioned before, um, books have always been a big part of my life, but lately I have not been reading books. I've listened to some audiobooks, but I've been wasting way too much time on stupid games on my phone and on social media and on watching YouTube videos, which I love, <laughs> and watching Netflix. And so I need to be reading every day. And so this is kind of like my little note to self or whatever that I need a return to reading. I It's so important to expand my mind that way and even if I'm reading like for, for right now I'm just reading novels that are easy reads that are enjoyable um, and then I would like to get into you know some more uh, deep kind of stuff but for now um, I'm just reading some interesting reads that are quick and easy to help me get back into the swing of it. Um, so there's that. Okay, so now I've got that photo down. These two photos, there's one of me reading and one of my daughter reading. I'm just going to adhere those down here. So I've got myself a nice little grid. And I'm using three photos on an eight and a half by 11 layout, so it is possible. And if you didn't want to do a horizontal layout, you could always flip this whole thing. You could do the journaling in this spot and the title here and just do your photos a little bit differently. Okay, so now I want to work on my title. 
and I mentioned that I wanted to do a return to reading. So I'm going to use these stickers to get my title down, and I'm not going to make you watch that part. Okay, so I have my title laid out on some wax paper so I can decide exactly where I want it. I was trying to decide if I wanted to center it or how the words would exactly fit. And as I mentioned, I want to do return to reading. And as I put the word return across the top of reading, there's this little tiny space here. And I thought I could write the word to sideways in that space. So I like laying things out like this so I can decide exactly how I want to do that. And I want to write the word not on top of other words. So I'm going to space this so that it's equally distant from the bottom or from the top of this photo and from the side of this photo. And then it leaves me this blank space here to write the word to in. And then this is left over from the tough story kit that I had. It says one day at a time and I'm going to plan to put that above it. And so that's going to be my little um, kind of title cluster there. I think I am going to put the, the um, chipboard word story time over for the win, but you could definitely leave it as is or you could print and cut this out and pop it up if you wanted a similar look. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get those stuck down, and then when I get to writing the word to, I'll, I'll come and show you. Okay, so I'm ready to write the word to. I'm going to use a thicker pen just so that it stands out. Um, at least I think I am. Sometimes I like to test it on just a scrap piece of paper to see how it will look. Uh, maybe I do want a thin one. I could do it cursive -y if I wanted to. I don't think I do want to. No, I'm not going to use that thin and I'm not going to use that thick. I'm going to go somewhere in between. So I think I'm going to do like a point. We'll try this point five that I have. So I'm just going to write the word two to kind of fit in that space. Actually, I just should have used the point eight. Okay, I think you can tell what it says, return to reading. Um, or, sorry, now I'm going to change my mind again. Let's see if these, I have these little tiny alphabet stickers from Teresa Collins that are just white. They're black and white. I'm going to see what that looks like. They're a little too tall, but I might be able to cut them down. Okay, I actually like that better. So, now it says return to reading, and now, oh, I like how it says you can let her choose right above it, so I'm going to make sure I let that show. The voice asked, you can let her choose, return to reading. I like that. Okay, it's the little things, people. So I'm going to use some of my double-sided adhesive tape to glue this down. And I'm just going to do it right above that phrase, and I'm centering it with the title. And I still think it would be nice to have something maybe circular up there, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so now I'm on to the journaling portion, and I'm going to stamp before I do my journaling. I can't decide if I'm going to stamp above or below. So this is from a stamp set in Allie's shop, and I can't decide if I want it at the bottom or at the top. I think the top. And I am lucky enough to be on Allie's uh, digital creative team. And as part of that, we were able to receive her brand new inks, which are on pre-order right now. And I've tried them out. They're awesome. Um, you should try them. But I thought I might use one of these three colors to stamp the story. And now I'm kind of thinking I might want it at the bottom. I could stamp it in the middle and then right on top and bottom of it. Here's the question. I want to add a bit of red over here. So do I stamp in red or do I add a little red circle, which will tie in a circle? I think I'm going to stamp in red. So I'm going to use the Pendleton ink color. And these are like a pigment ink. And they work really well. And I'm just going to stamp in the middle here. Okay, it says the story. 
and then I will write on top and bottom of that. So I won't make you watch me write. I'm going to write my journaling in, and then I will come back and show you what finishing touches I'll add. So I've got most of my story down, and I just want to add some finishing touches. And I'm finding myself wanting to use a different color. I want to add in another color for some reason. So first I'm going to actually look at my, my black um, word stickers that came in the in the um, read story kit and I just want to add a few of them here that I can add directly to the photos to just tell a little bit more of the story read for life I'm gonna put that under the the title okay so I still want to put something maybe up here and then I just feel like I really want another color on here for some reason. I've looked at my book, um, my story kit for Reed, and these aren't, I don't know what color I want in here. Maybe I don't need another color, but I just wanted to look at these and see if I could add yellow. So this is from the first story kit. It's called Firsts or First. And I like that this, the yellow ones, and actually all of these have, these have a good color. The, the yellow ones all work. Or I could do blue. I like fresh start. Actually, I really like that circle there. I don't have another light blue. But I maybe could look in my stash to see if I have anything that I could just add something really small that's light blue to to this here. So I'm going to look around to see what I have. And then I will come back and show you how it's finished. Okay, I tried not to look too hard, but I found this in the same kit that this came from, the first kit. And it says first on it, but I'm going to just slide it underneath this photo and it's going to balance the little bit of blue there. But what I want to do is I'm going to punch it with this notebook edge punch and that way you really can't tell what it is. So there we go. And then it's just going to be this little pop of blue right here that kind of ties in with that pop of blue. So I'll just adhere that down real quick. And I do, because I'm doing the whole reading thing, but I'm also kind of going notebook and office-y, I do want to add a few staples and that's going to be my finishing touch. So I just have my stapler here and I think I'm going to add one to story time. And I'm going to add one to fresh start up here. And maybe that's all. And then lastly, I'm going to add a date. So I'm just going to add the date of, um, well, I could add the date to each photo and then the date of my journaling. So I'll do today's date for the journaling which let me look what that is. June 14th. Okay, and I'm just going to use this black, Black Butte ink from Allie. And actually, I'm just gonna do today's date. I'm not gonna do all the different dates. And I'm gonna stamp it below my journaling, just in that space there. And that is all. So that is going to complete this layout. So I hope that you have found a way that you can use some of the digital elements. I printed a border here onto my layout. Um, you could also print a journaling card to stick here instead of what I've done here. There are some really cute um, new journaling cards in Alley Shop. They aren't from the the read story kit but they have a reading theme to them because the, the story kit was so popular so you definitely check those out and that would be a nice addition here as well so thanks so much for watching and we will see you again soon